Here we go. It is happening. It took us a little while, John. I'm really excited to see you. What is going on? John Gibbons. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> very appreciate it. We're very, very excited to finally get the chance to spread the word of you. And, and not that the word isn't already spread, but at least help with that. And I have to say, I've been doing some research on you and, and you are a body. You have created the body master method. So, yeah, yes. Very. It's a very, very nice shirt, by the way. Very well fitted. And um, <laughs> and uh, please tell us a little bit about what got you into teaching body work. Well, I started. Uh, well, I started when I was in the army. In reality, because I joined the army when I was sixteen, so I left school when I was fifteen. Didn't really know what to do, so I joined as a mechanic, and then mechanic electrician. So I was fixing vehicles, and then that helped me basically many years later to understand the wiring system of the body in terms of the nervous system. So that was a that was like a bit of a bonus. So if a wire is cut, it's obviously it's an open circuit, and you have short circuits. Ah. And obviously the battery is not working, and then then you have to try to find out where that missing sort of wire is. And obviously the nervous system sort of follows. A, well, it's not the same pathway, but um, it 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 helped me uh, with my patients. So then I become a physical trainer in the army. So then I'm now branching into the physical side, and I did that for a while because I did 12 years in the military, and then whilst I was in the military. The, because everything is related, anything is related, say, to physical. So I could do like sports therapy and sports massage. So I sort of started whilst in because the army basically paid um, for me to do lots of things. I even did my exercise to music, step aerobics, um, I become a mountain leader, cave instructor, uh, skier, and it just it just went on because it's you know I was just everywhere, Germany, Cyprus, just teaching all these all this stuff everywhere. Uh, and then I decided to leave the army. Um, at the time, it was for a lady who we were going to go and live in Dubai, and I was going to be like a trainer. Uh, but it didn't quite work out like that, as you know, as life's challenges give you. And then um, when I started teaching for a college, and uh, when I left, um, and I was teaching sports. In fact, I was teaching public services like map reading. Um, exercise therapy, if you like, for students who wanted to join the, the police or the military in UK. And then uh, I did sports massage. So I was teaching that for Reading College. And then I was teaching for a company called Premier, who I trained with the army. It's mainly ex-military who would teach for them. Um, and ex-military would attend these courses. So that was quite nice because I was still almost like still military-fied, um, even though I'm now teaching, teaching the therapy side. Then I trained as an osteopath because um, I'm now based at Oxford University. So I run a clinic there. And then I spent five years to be an osteopath. So I finished that in 2003. So I was a sports therapist, well, physical trainer, sports therapist, osteopath. And now I'm involved in lecturing. So I'm now teaching the fifth year medical students. And I'm also teaching uh, the MSc in sports medicine. So there was doctors physios, uh, athletic trainers from the US. Um, so that was quite good because then I started to look after the boat race team. So the Oxford University boat race. So I did that for 10 years. So I would be with all the, the, the Olympians because loads of them were Olympians, the Canadians. And in fact, my first year was 2006 boat race. And we had Barney Williams, who was a Canadian Olympian. Uh, we had Jake Betzel, who was Canadian. Uh, we had uh dr schroeder who was an american he was like six foot nine i think he's a doctor <laughs> doctor so he was quite cool yeah so i call him dr doctor uh, but I, you know, i'm probably five foot eight and he's six foot nine so pretty tall um so that's where i saw like started from um and obviously during my time i was treating probably 20 patients a day at oxford university so i'd be looking after the students and the staff of oxford uh, and anybody else that wanted to come and see me. So it was mainly like osteopathy and body work, maybe not so much on the, you know, the simple massage techniques. Um, it was more almost like implementing an osteopathic technique with maybe a manipulative technique with maybe, and then maybe using some other stuff, you know, like the Graston tools, I'm not trained in Graston, but in UK, we have similar sort of concepts, you know, the instrument assisted soft tissue mobilizer. 
uh, but it's all stemmed from the, the Graston sort of tool, I think, as far as I'm aware. Um, and then I was teaching uh, my own courses. So I started implementing, I think I did a, because many, many students wanted to learn about the pelvis. So I think I started with muscle energy techniques, which is a, an osteopathic technique from, from um, Fred Mitchell in, uh, like in the 50s, 40s, 50s, like 48 doing years. Um, which is similar to like a PNF technique, which has come from the physiotherapy profession from a similar sort of decade, I think it's around the 60s. Um, so then I started teaching like a four day, no, it wasn't, it was a five day pelvis course because all these sports therapists or athletic trainers wanted to understand about the pelvis. So then they didn't want to spend, say, $80,000 on to becoming an osteopath, but they wanted to look after patients who had SI pain, back pain, hip pain. So then I devised this course, and then it seemed to be really popular. And then from there, the pelvis course evolved and evolved. So it went five days to four to three, then it's four, then three minutes. And now I've written a book on it. Um, so my books are, one sec, I'll just get rid of my book. So my book is there. You probably can't, it's upside, yeah. So, so I did this one, I'm not sure when that was, 2016 maybe, so it's, Pretty full on, so it's 200, uh, quite a few pages, 270 pages just on one area, so the other body. So I've used quite a lot of referencing from Vleeman and Dan Lee, um, who I call the God and Goddess, and um, some stuff with Myers, Schamberger, Wolf Schamberger, Wolf Schamberger who's a, who has his own Malalignment book. So I tried to adapt a lot of stuff from that, and that's worked quite well. And then from there, um, and then thought, well, maybe I'll start implementing other courses. So then I started teaching uh, like a shoulder course, and then subsequently I've written a book on the shoulder, uh, which is quite nice because when the students attend my shoulder course or my pelvis course, they will get this as the course notes. Nice. So when it's on, which they like, rather than me giving like a booklet, which I hated doing. Um, so if you do my knee course, I would give you like a pamphlet. It's maybe 20 pages. And it almost irritates me a little bit because I'm, I'm, I'm writing a book on the knee, but it won't be done until, I don't know, 2024 because I've got to do a hip book first, but I, I'm doing a spinal book at the moment, but I've also got to do a second edition, MET, which is my first book. So I've done seven books now. Um, so thank you. So if you basically do seven courses with me, you will get a book that I've written. And my rec most recent one, I'm sorry, I should have prepared. That's um, okay. Uh, oh, right there. I don't know. Where's it gone? Uh, yeah. I, sorry. That's okay. It's my nerve book. But, um, we'll post everything. I'll post your website and how to find everything. One of the things, too, that I found with your courses is they're very meticulous and very thoughtful and very well spelled out. So I, I yeah. don't, I don't, I, I, it's almost like I can see that happening where you get a book when you go to one of your classes because you really, I think one of the things that caught me in my ear first was how I think some of the great body workers like yourself, they're yeah. always paying attention and comparing and finding like cool things that they can relate the body to and yeah. cool things that they have in their experiences to keep building upon and getting deeper and deeper and deeper into being able to teach and express what their findings are. Yeah. So I thought it was real cool. I, they're the first time I ever heard like the working with the electrical wires, but it makes such sense and through the military and doing all these cool things. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you for all that. What a journey. Yeah, that's okay. That's very kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it is. So, you know, and I do have, I think my last count was 404 videos on, on YouTube. <laughs> so yeah, and they were hitting about four million views a month, which is um, quite a lot. I think I'm down to about one million or so now. But it oh, well, YouTube it just goes like this. Yeah, it does. It goes up and down, up and down. I get about twenty questions per day about stuff, and you know, my, awesome. my knee hurts, my shoulder hurts, and I normally and I try to be um, pretty active. I try to answer those questions as, as best as I can. Uh, but it's, it's interesting because obviously. It'll say, oh, John, what exercises can I do? You know, what do you recommend I do for my pelvis or my shoulder pain? I've got impingement of my hips. And I'm like, well, it's hard for me to recommend an exercise whilst I'm typing. <laughs> yes. I mean, 
Yeah, all that's one of the things I've read about that you say, uh, and I read in uh, when I was researching you, was you know you talk about the symptom. You know, yeah. it's not always you can't treat necessarily a symptom. What's the cause? It's really hard to see the cause when you're 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 typing away online. Yeah, well, exactly, <laughs> but um, but because I you know I've probably seen. I've, you know, I tell my students this quite often because I, you know, I'm a pretty active teacher. And I've probably been teaching for, I don't know, 20 years maybe. It must be 20 years. It must be. Um, so I've taught thousands and thousands of therapists. I've even had like someone from Australia who's come to Oxford University to do a one-day course with me. Uh, I've had people from Korea to do two days, Iran, um, Thailand. Um, so that's quite nice. So they literally travel, you know, like a 20-hour plane flight to do like a course. And I think I've probably seen about 100,000 patients, give or take. Uh, but like even like my 20 students on a the course, they normally say to me, John, have you seen this? And it might show me something with their knee or show me something with their ankle or show me something with their shoulder. And I said, in reality, I probably have seen every single musculoskeletal injury there is to see, but not just like once or twice, probably 50 times or 100 times. You know, they're almost like, but to that person who's maybe newly qualified as a, as a therapist, they might not have seen a grade three tear of the, the pectoralis muscle tendon here. Um, whereas I've probably seen 10 or 20. You know, like ankle inversion sprains, it's I've probably seen 300, five, mm -hmm. 500,000. Um, so I've probably seen most things. Um, so, you know, so when all these students say to me, have you seen this? I've got, well, you know, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know. So I normally, when I teach my kinesio taping course, EVO is probably one of the simplest courses I teach because it's basically about, about tape. Um, but when I apply the tape, I will normally say that what we are applying the tape to is nine times, in fact, 99 times out of 100 will only be the symptom. Um, and you almost have to try say where the cause would be. You know, like someone might say to me, oh, John, um, can you apply tape if someone's got a piriformis syndrome? I said, if you believe there is such a thing as a piriformis syndrome, I mean, obviously, you're going to apply the tape over the central buttock area, um, and then it might alleviate some of the symptoms. But what you have to try to remember is if the symptoms is in that central buttock, it might not be coming from the piriformis as such. It might well be coming from uh, a pathology directly within the hip joint or it might be referring from the SI joint, or it might be referring from the lumbar spine. I mean, so the chances of having central buttock pain that's localized to that piriformis muscle is probably close to zero, if I'm honest. Um, and many, thank you, <laughs> and many people have come to me, they've even had steroid injections directly into the painful site in the bum, and I'm saying, it ain't gonna work. It's not gonna work. I said, it's just gonna, you know, it's just gonna go on and on and on. And everybody's going to treat. Uh, in fact, I had a patient last week, and uh, no offense to the to the therapist you've seen, um, because you know we've all got skill levels. Whether we're a chiropractor, a physiotherapist, an athletic trainer, it doesn't really matter. Um, and um, so he, he saw me, and he's had back pain and knee pain. He's had three MRIs for his back. He's only a young man, 35, and um, and he's had knee pain. Um, but and I'm saying to him, so he's having two chiropractic sessions a week and he's having two acupuncture sessions a week. And the acupuncturist says, your glute medius is very tight, so he puts an acupuncture needle in to try to release the muscle. And I'm saying, but you know, you, you, and you've been doing this twice a week for six months, eight months, 12 months, and you see the chiropractor who only manipulate, you know, this one particular chiropractor, they're not, you know, obviously there is a variation of, um, is only manipulating his lumbar spine. Uh, I'm not really looking at anything else. And I said, have they looked at your hips? And he said, well, no. I said, I said, as he sat there, I said, can you, can you cross your leg over? As he put one leg, like a tailor's position, where you lift the leg over, you know the exercise I mean? Medically, it's like the Faber test. So it's like the flexion, abduction with the external rotation. And if, and if you've got any pathology within the hip joint, it would normally show itself on that one simple test. Um, so when he said, you know, I'm struggling to cross my leg over, and I said, well, we need to look at the hip joint. So when I looked at his hip, if you think about anatomically, we need about 35 degrees of internal rotation of the hip and about 45 degrees of external rotation of the hip. But when I test him, he had probably zero to five degrees going in and about 20 going out. And I'm saying, your hips are so stiff. And I'm saying the problem is 
It might not be an impingement within the hip because it's bilateral and typically is more one side than the other side. Or if you've got an impingement, but I'm saying if you're a man who is 65, I would say you've probably got arthritic hips. But because you've mentioned when you were 10, 15 years old, 10 to 15, that you play football and you'd have hip pain, I'm saying more than likely, structurally, um, you might find that there's pathological changes within the hip, not degenerative changes, just structural abnormality, where you might have like a dysplasia. You know, if it is a condition, normally affects boys between 5 and 10, 11, it's called uh, Perth's disease or leg calvate Perth's. I'm not saying he had that. Uh, I said, just have a routine x-ray um, of your hip joints rather than an MR scan, just as, just to rule out, you know, look at the, the socket and how deep it is, et cetera, et cetera. And then we'll just take it from there. But I said, just work on mobilization on the hip joints and you might find the back pain. It works as a triangle. So the lumbar, the pelvis and the hip is like a triangle. Problem with your hip joint, you will have a problem with your back. A problem with your hip, you will have a problem with your knee. Okay, so when your knee has symptoms and your back has symptoms, and if you treat the knee, you'll always you'll, you'll never get rid of it. And if you treat the back, you'll always have back pain. It'll just it just it'll always go on. It's like Dr. Ida Rolf, a famous rolfer, yeah, who taught um, Tom Myers, etc. Um, you know, I think she says where the pain is, the problem is not. So I normally you utilize. It's probably not exact that those that, that phrase, but um, it's very similar. And I quite like that, so I use that. So where the pain is, the problem is not. And even my friend James Earls, you know, he like, you know, we, we try to utilize those sayings and, and stuff. So, um, you know, so, so I like that. So if you only focus on where the pain is, I, I say to my patients and my students, I said, the only person interested in the pain is the patient. And I'm saying you as the therapist should be like a detective and you should be trying to rather than chase the pain. Oh, John, my back hurts. Why are you looking at my hip? Or my knee hurts. Why are you looking at my hip? And I'm saying more likely... The causative factor is above and below the joint. So if you've got knee pain, it's normally a symptom, and it's the weak link in the chain. So there's hundreds of causes of knee pain. Um, and we obviously have to look at the foot biomechanics and even like the great toe, the hallux. You know, you need at least 45 degrees of extension to, to walk and run normally. And then you want to be looking in the hip. And if you've got a hip problem, you'll have knee pain. If you've got a foot problem, you'll have knee pain. So uh, if you just treat ah. the knee I love listening to you. And it's, it's true because I mean, even yesterday I had people to my house and the woman was like, Oh, my knee, I got a shot in it. I'm like, why would you get a, sh you know, you, you don't want to get into it too much when you're having, you know, yeah. playtime at your house or whatever. But I just, I can't, I can't believe how far body work is coming and yeah. seeing some of these things that doctors are just now, you know, focused on the symptoms. So it's really nice to hear you. And you just explained it so beautifully that yeah. oftentimes it's not at all where the pain is. It's around it. And, and I'm, I'm excited to check out some more of your classes. You have, you do live classes too. You're uh, located yeah. in Swindon. England. So Swind yeah. Swindon. And do well, you, are was, you going to? Yeah, well, I was in Oxford University for my, my clinic was based there. But it's literally my contract ends uh, next month. So um, it's been closed since March of the, so the COVID. So sadly, I thought, well, and my online courses, you know, because my teaching was, I always, I, I almost said to myself, I'm not going to be doing online courses ever, <laughs> Everyone uh, did. ever, because <laughs> I prefer teaching one, no, not one to one, but I prefer teaching in that environment. I show you where to put your hands, especially like spinal manipulation, using a towel, using the shape of your hand to try to manipulate and all that stuff so i physically would need to be there to show you but then because my course is um because i've written these books and then i've done all the content a friend of mine sarah jane wall said you should try to utilize what you've got into content and then when i look back now i think for god's sake john why didn't you do it a few years ago because it's it's remarkable how it works and i think the students really like it because if you come to me in a shoulder course i would teach you say six hours but like you're saying, it's hard to take in constant because I talk and talk and talk and I'm, and I'm giving information all the time. A lot of my therapists was, you, will use a dictaphone and record it so they'll watch it. And I think, well, it's almost like an online course there because the online, they have 100 lessons, which would take you, say, three to four weeks if you do two to three hours a day because it's 18 assessments. Whereas the face-to-face the -face course is only, say, six to seven hours. Whereas there's no exam, you get a piece of paper at the end of it. But when I say test you in a week's time, you're like, 
oh my God, I <laughs> remember. And I work with super spinatus, you know, the, the nerve, the, the nerve innervation, and where does it go to, and what does it do, and how does the scapular humeral rhythm work together? You're like, oh my God, I can't do it. But in, in your own, watching the screen with the book on the shoulder, you can go through it slow time. Like the nerve is an interesting one. My nerve course, I tell my my students that the nerve course will be the most valuable course you will ever do, I believe, in, in your life. But it's never busy. So I might, my shoulder course I'll get, it's always full. I'll get say 18 students on a course. But my nerve course, I'll, I'll, I'll roughly get six, seven, eight. And I think it's almost like nerves. Oh God, oh, I'll leave that for another day. <laughs> and um, so, and then another day comes and I'll go, oh, maybe I'll do it another time. And because I have a diploma that's 10 courses, they have to do it, but they almost don't want to do it because it is, it's a fascinating subject, but it's so complex. It's like when you watch one of my videos of me, I'm talking about the brachial plexus. So I'm talking on a whiteboard and I'm literally drawing all the nerves just by my memory. So I'm drawing almost like a, like a, like a London underground. Yeah, and I'm saying the median nerve will come from C5, 6, 7, and T1, and it becomes this, and it goes, and it supply, and another video then explains all the nerve, all the muscles that it goes to. But my online nerve course is my most popular. So because I think people say, I can do it online, slow time, and I can just watch, and if I don't understand, stop, have a cup of tea, and watch it again, pause Rewind it. Find it, yep. Yeah, and then I might do my assessment, because uh, you need 100% pass to get through it, but you can check your results where you went wrong and, and retest. So, and I think it just seems to be uh, working really well. So I, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, uh, I'm quite pleased that you're, you're going to have a few of your classes on the Massage Mentor Institute, and we're going to probably get those up in a few weeks. And uh, yeah. I'm very excited about that. And I, I think, too, I think that you're not alone with that online class. I used to get so pissed. I'm like, you got to be kidding me online yeah. massage class. But then the yeah. more that they're on, you know, one, you get the best seat. Yes. Two, you can rewind, like you said, you can take yeah. your time. And the more intense stuff, you know, you don't have to, like, so you're not sped through it. You can kind of do your own pace. So they're really great points. And uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, and, this, and you get a certified, you know, sort of get at the end yeah. as well. Uh, but they are, they are, you know, don't get me wrong here, they are. They are pretty full on, so it's um, <laughs> if you can start with one, maybe like the MET or the glutes one or the K tip, because it's it'll get you into the process. Like my soft tissue course um, is it's 120 lessons, and um, and it's 22 assessments as part of it. Um, so it's you know it's pretty good, but um, it's it's you know like you know like people say to me, it just never seemed to end. <laughs> It's just like another lesson, and another post is unlocked, and another one, and it's and it's just ongoing. But you know, and I think well, that's good value because it's not drastic money uh, for the courses. You normally get like a discount code, and once you've done one course, you get a discount code for the next one, and it seems to, and it work well. I've been hearing great things from a lot of times. My staff members will be like, oh, "I have we, you have fans at Freedom Massage." They're like. John Gibbons. So they're probably uh, sitting at home like, oh my God, he's on. So oh. you're doing a great job and I'm honored to get a chance to talk with you. Hopefully we'll get you back again and uh, we're going to get you involved in some more stuff. And uh, thank you for your years of hard work and your persistence and your oh. meticulous work and videos and everything that you're doing. Is there anything that you want to leave us with? We're going to put up your website and how to contact you and what people can check out, but is there anything you want to leave us with? Uh, no, I'm, I'm okay, I think. So um, you can access the online stuff um, quite easily. A YouTube video, maybe just search with John Gibbons. Oh, I did a talk, actually, with um, Bob and Brad. Yeah? You know? Oh, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure I do. <laughs> that was great. Yeah? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so well, it was actually Bob uh, on his own uh, rather than Bob and Brad. <laughs> um, so that was um, that was quite nice to 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 talk uh, to him because they are pretty popular. They, I think yeah, they yes. like three million, three million subscribers. Yes. So, um, um, so yeah, they sent. I literally today um, they sent me like a, a Bob and Brad um, like a little mini massage gun. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So uh, oh, that was quite nice. So um, I like them. I like them, the, the the trademark on and the paint. So it's yeah, it's quite cool. So I will I will use that. 
So nice. um, if, yeah, if you have any questions, you can just uh, contact me on, on email. And so I normally will answer questions quite quickly. So people normally say to me, oh my God, I can't believe that uh, you respond like within, I try to answer within one day, uh, if I can rather than leaving it for, I'm after you're off to Scotland on Friday in my motorhome. Oh, so nice. we're, gonna, we're gonna go to the Isle of Mull and the Isle of Skye. Oh, wow, yeah. very cool. So, um, yeah, and I'll put a motorbike on the back of my van. So um, so we'll have a, a week. Yeah, I've got a few motorbikes, so it's, um, yeah. Very yeah. nice. But, Thank you, John, so much for your time. Hang tight. Everyone, John Gibbons will put all his information up so you can check him out. Thank you for your time, John. Thank you. Thank you. It's been great.